we are going to turn to a story we're calling 10% Happier. We're trying something a little different on Nightline tonight because I'm going to tell you a story about me. Actually, it's not just about me because I found a way to make myself significantly happier and it could probably work for you too. I stumbled upon this whole thing as a result of a bizarre, unplanned odyssey, and it all started with the most embarrassing day of my life. From ABC News, this is Good Morning America. We're going to go now to uh, Dan Harris, who's at the news desk, Dan. Good morning, Charlie and Diane. Thank you. This Wall is me 10 years ago, and the reason this is the most embarrassing day of my life is not that it looks like I've been attacked by a blow dryer and a can of hairspray. No, it's that I am about to freak out on national television. Health news now, one of the world's most commonly prescribed medications may be providing a big bonus. Researchers report people who take cholesterol-lowering drugs called statins for at least five years may also lower their risk for cancer. But it's too early to, to prescribe statins slowly for cancer production. At this point, I realize I'm helpless, so I bail right in the middle. Uh, that does it for news. We're going to go back now to Robin and Charlie. The control room, clearly taken by surprise, continues to roll video for the next story about Harry Potter, which I was no longer able to read. All right, thanks very much, Dan Harris at the news desk with some of the headlines of the morning. Want to go to Tony Perkins now? He Once the fear subsided, humiliation rushed in. I knew with rock solid certainty that I had just had a panic attack on national television. So why would I tell you this very embarrassing story? Because that on-air meltdown was the culmination of something that had been building for years, something I never stopped to address. It's something we all battle, whether we have panic attacks or not. Call it the voice in your head. You know the voice I'm talking about. The often nasty inner narrator who discourages and derails you when you're considering going after opportunities in your life. That stew of urges and impulses that has you losing your temper and regretting it later, or putting your hand in the fridge when you're not even hungry. And for many of us, it's that nagging temptation to float off into our own heads instead of actually listening to people. Kind of caught me and the wife at a bad town. It's a love story. My favorite comedian, Dave Chappelle, nailed it on his show. A That's a monkey. He spins the NASCAR race. <laughs> Unicorns. In my case, like many Americans, my inner voice was pushing me to succeed. Annual New Year's party in New York. This is me in my late 20s. Thank you, Dan. I had my dream job, but I also had doubts about whether I was good enough. But it's hard to do that. All right, I'm going to try it. Three, two, one. My solution? Become a workaholic. After 9-11, I volunteered to spend years in war zones where I covered the heroics of our men and women overseas and got a real taste of both the horror and the adrenaline of combat. Americans to institute health care for Now here I am back home. Yeah, practice makes perfect, you know. I may look okay, but the guy you see here, he's having trouble getting out of bed. This tax debate is one of the clearest choices in this election. After years of always barreling forward, when I finally slowed down, it was as if my mind revolted and I got depressed. And so in my free time, I briefly but stupidly began self-medicating, even using cocaine, which my doctor would later tell me almost certainly produced that on-air panic attack. That realization that I'd been blindly letting my urges and impulses yank me around became a turning point. Eventually, I would find the antidote to this kind of mindlessness, something that would, to quote the somewhat tongue-in-cheek title of a new book I've written, make me 10% happier. But to get there, a few other things had to happen. We're going to take a closer look tonight at the continuing battle about teaching evolution. Coincidentally, it was around this time that my boss, Peter Jennings, assigned me to cover the religion beat. To be candid, I was not initially super interested in the subject. This was the last time I read scripture, my bar mitzvah. But here I am. Nice to meet you. Among the believers, going to mega churches, mosques, and Mormon temples. <laughs> I made real friendship. Each of us could learn something from the other. And developed a newfound and lasting respect for the value of having a view of the world that's larger than just yourself. However, none of what I encountered spoke to me personally. That all changed, though, when one of my colleagues recommended I check out this rather odd little man. Welcome. The best-selling, Oprah-approved self-help guru Eckhart Tolle. Alertness arises. Yes, yes. Uh, which is different from thinking. Tolle was the first person I ever heard talk about the voice in the head, which he says is so busy obsessing about the past or the future that you miss what's happening right now 
and make stupid decisions, like I had done when I got depressed and self-medicated with drugs. So I decided I need to meet this guy. Do you stop thinking? How do you stop the voice in your head? You create little spaces in your daily life where you are aware but not thinking. For example, you take one conscious breath. Unbreak my heart, Tolly. That's all the practical advice you've got? But I can hear the cynics in the audience saying, guys saying I can, I can you know, awaken by taking a deep breath. What is, he, what is he talking about? Yes, that's the mind talking. So that's, and of course, many people will have their mind commenting on what I'm saying and saying well, that is useless. That was exactly what my mind was saying. Don't you ever get pissed off, annoyed, irritated, sad, anything negative? No, I, I accept what is, and that's why life has become so simple. But somebody cuts you off in, 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 their, in, in your car? It's fine. It's like a sudden gust of wind. I don't personalize a gust of wind, or, and so it's simply what is. And you're able to enjoy every moment, even if I start asking you a ton of annoying questions. Yes, that would be fine. So it's really... Don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> I walked out of the interview deeply confused by Tolly, but still very much intrigued by the notion of defanging the voice in my head. As it happened, just a few weeks later, I was moderating a debate for Nightline, and one of the guests was Deepak Chopra, the inspiration for the movie The Love Guru. My goal is to get you to say, gee, you are you, TM. I couldn't resist whipping out my little camera to ask if he had any practical advice. So your mind doesn't wander? You don't find yourself thinking about things that are in the past or in the future as opposed to in the present? I have no um, regrets about the past. I do not hold resentments or grievances that come from the past, and I don't anticipate the future. I live in the moment. Okay, so what if the moment is horrible? What if you really have to go to the bathroom and there's no toilet nearby? Or what if you're super hungry then and there's no I food? I separate myself from the situation surrounding the moment. The moment is always free. It's the transformational vortex to the infinite. Apparently, when one lives in the moment, one becomes unafraid to use terms like transformational vortex to the infinite. With Deepak not making any sense to me, I decided to dive further into America's self-help subculture where things only got weirder. Do you want to be a millionaire? What kind of a business do you want to have? I met a gaggle of gurus, many of whom featured prominently in the best-selling book and DVD, The Secret. And their advice for dealing with the voice in my head was to force myself to do more positive thinking, which they promised could get me anything you want. This is Joe Vitale, who charges five grand for a ride in his Rolls Royce. Well, there are people who think I should charge a lot more than that. They think that's giving it away. And who in this interview, as you're about to see, folds like a cheap lawn chair. So what if I want a thing, um, a diamond necklace for my wife? Can I, I can get that by thinking about it? Not just thinking about it. That's one of the biggest misconceptions of all time. You have to take action. Isn't that a, a statement of the glaringly obvious? You think it's news to most people that if you want something, you have to want it and then try to get it? You know, when you put it that way, it sounds silly and, and actually, you know, pretty brainless. After listening to me yammer on about all of this for months, my then fiance, Bianca, who's a doctor, decided to intervene. She started giving me books to read. Books that made me realize that all this stuff about the voice in the head and being in the moment, these are ideas that people have been talking about for centuries. From the Buddha to Sigmund Freud to, Run the damn ball. Run to Coach Taylor from Friday Night Lights. So I suggest you wake up, get your heads in this game. I read tons of these books, stacks of them, and it was through these books that I finally found something that actually does work. It's simple, scientifically tested, and completely free. The problem was, it sounded totally unacceptable to me. Up next, what I found at the end of my long, strange journey, it's the secret to success for everyone from executives to pro athletes, even Marines. It's been shown to rewire your brain for happiness. How I got there and how you can too Look at this. when Nightline continues.
Welcome back. Not long ago, I found myself on a strange, unplanned journey. Maybe it started with an on-air panic attack and led to interviews with a gaggle of gurus, none of whom could give me any practical, actionable advice for taming the voice in my head. Until finally, I stumbled upon the last thing I ever would have expected, meditation. I always assumed meditation was for people who like crystals, incense, and John Tesh music. In other words, there was no way I was going to meditate. But then I heard about scientific studies showing that meditation can, among other things, lower your blood pressure and boost your immune system. And then I learned that meditation does not necessarily involve wearing robes, lighting incense, or believing in anything in particular. People of any faith or no faith can do it. In fact, it's totally straightforward. There are basically just three steps. Number one, sit upright. Doesn't have to be cross-legged. You can do it in a chair, on the floor, whatever. Two. Just try to feel your breath coming in and going out. And three, whenever your mind wanders, which it will a million times, simply return your attention to the breath. So one day after I learned all of this, I very reluctantly gave it a shot. Breathe in. What kind of bird was Big Bird? Breathe out. Do I need a haircut? What's the definition? Shrubbery. You decided pencils like should word. be yellow. In a way, it was like the panic attack, my mind hurling lots of crazy thoughts at me. Idea for old school hip hop vegetable. Rap what Van Winkle. But this time, I had a weapon. Get in the game, dude. Breathe in those in. brief moments where I was Breathe simply out. focused on my breath. Breathe in. Breathe out. It was like Breathe pressing in. the mute button on the Breathe voice in my out. head. Where did Breathe gerbils in. run wild? Breathe out. But I described out. myself as more of a Breathe baller in. or a shotgun. Breathe out. And it created Breathe space in. between Breathe the thoughts out. before they inevitably came marauding back in. Meditation is like exercise for your brain. I'm not speaking metaphorically here. Check this out. Brain scans show that short daily doses of meditation literally grow the gray matter in areas associated with self-awareness and compassion and shrink the area associated with stress. As for me, it's not like my life has become a nonstop parade of rainbows and unicorns. I still sometimes let work stress me out and distract me, but my emotions and impulses no longer yank me around as much which, frankly, is a superpower. Meditation has also helped me slow down enough that the good stuff in my life has become much more vivid, from the fact that ABC lets me be the co-anchor of Nightline to simply eating cookies with my wife or playing with our cats. An important point here. It is possible to get happier in this way without going soft. These Marines here are part of an experiment to see if meditation makes more resilient warriors. The first time they said to you, we're gonna teach you how to meditate, what was your gut reaction? Uh, this is gonna be absolutely ridiculous. Corporate executives are using it too. Even the lead singer of Weezer, who told me meditation helped him cure crippling stage fright. It's about eight, eight years ago, I started practicing two hours every day. And uh, at first, the, actually the, the unpleasantness got worse before I was going on stage and I was wondering, is, is this really working? But I stuck with it and now I feel so much calmer. And check out this list of other conditions meditation has been shown to be good for. There are no miracle cures despite what you hear from the self-help gurus. I like to say meditation has made me roughly 10% happier. If it could work for a fidgety, skeptical newsman, maybe you too should give it a shot.